<laughs> I just finished recording the outro for the last video and I, I didn't even cut the camera. It's like still rolling, but I'm gonna do the intro to this now. So we've got, all right, I'm gonna make a list of everything that I have to do. Cut four circles, drill out these holes, solder these to the circles, cut the tops off of them and then shape them and they're done. Drill out the rivets that are only temporary rivets. Cut and file around the sides of these components right here. Solder the tube into here and then tap the tube. And then I have to make 12 handmade nuts and 12 handmade bolts, which will also be soldered and tube set stones will be on the tops of each bolt and nut and I have to make a knob with a tube set either five millimeter or six millimeter stone that is soldered to the threaded rod and then I need to make an end cap for the other side of the threaded rod which will be thread locker or like Loctite or something like um, into place and that should hold and that's it. It would be great if I could finish this in six hours so let's get to work. All right. Is anybody else overwhelmed? I'm overwhelmed. And I know it got done. I mean, I guess you know it got done too. So what do we think that this is um, around noon, one or something? <laughs> okay, so I'm just drilling all of these holes um, by hand with the flex shaft. Why I'm not drilling it in the drill press, um, I don't know. I may have been unsure about how I was gonna hold them. So I have a little smaller drill bit that I'm doing kind of like a power, bleh, doing kind of like a pilot hole. I'm doing a pilot hole, not kind of like a pilot hole. It's a pilot hole. Okay, I mean, and then I'm going through both holes and making sure that the tube is gonna go through the two and a half millimeter tube. Remember, remember how important two and a half millimeter tube is? <laughs> this is a whole project is based on the two and a half millimeter measurement of that tube. I don't know, I may have just gotten tired of jumping back and forth between the bench pin and the drill press. It may have just seemed like better workflow to just drill it on my bench. It also is like something that this hole or these holes don't have to be super exact. It actually will work better if they have a little bit of play in them because then the you know pads will have free motion as they're clamping. Yeah. Silly hat. Oh, I think it's a good time to mention that I have been going through John High's like backlog um, from his main channel, I Build It, but then also the I Build It scrap bin and stuff. And I have to say that he does have a video, which I didn't know until much later. So he has a video where he converts all of his... Um, or well, I don't know, I shouldn't say all of his, but he has a video showing that he's converting his um, plywood clamps that are of this design that he designed uh, to have pads as well, little jaw pads. Um, so I feel like if I don't mention that, somebody's gonna call me out. <laughs> so I should mention it, but yeah, I mean, I've been going through, I think before I start, so here I'm, I'm cutting out the circles. I should at least like before I launch into this story, but I'm cutting out all the circles with the jeweler saw. Oh, look at how much it, it fits on there. Those have to be soldered together. So now I have to cut out three more. Um, but yeah, I think I had seen a few of his videos before. And I think I had just been looking for something that I could make for the treasure trade that would be interesting and like I thought maybe wouldn't take too much time. The irony of that statement is 
just whatever. But um, yeah, and uh, I just kind of stumbled upon that video and was like, oh, I'll make those clamps. That's fantastic. He says, you know, go to my website and get the plans. That's great. And my husband and I have just been watching his videos nonstop just making I mean right now we're in the middle of him making his own uh, bandsaw which is super crazy cool but yeah I'm really really just happy that this project helped me discover him and his content and you know because I'm not a woodworker so I don't typically watch a whole lot of woodworking videos but the fact that he's so unapologetic about like what he's doing and his confidence and his um, experience. And I just think it's really inspiring and it's a really good, like he's a really good role model for me to have. So forever grateful. What am I doing right now? Oh, oh my gosh. I figured out that the cavity that the tube has to get soldered into is actually too wide for the tube. I, this whole thing, you know, at the beginning it was not wide enough, but now it's too wide and I'm afraid it's not going to be in the center. And so I'm basically designing these little tiny 20 gauge kind of round wire clips out of sterling silver. It kind of looks like the metal part of a binder clip, to be completely honest. But I just needed the springiness. Um, I'll show a close-up in a second, but this was like literally unexpected. And I was like, I just need it to hold the tube in the center long enough that I can solder it in the center. <laughs> and then nobody will even notice. Yeah, see, I'm inserting that. I'll show you in a second, I promise. Not in this shot though. Just like lining it up with the tweezers. At this point I'm being creative, but I have no idea if this is gonna work. It did end up working, see? And so see how it kind of is a little housing that holds the tube right in the center. So if I was gonna make these again, well, first of all, I'd use thicker material for the center pieces, <laughs> but I would also probably solder the tube on to the middle part of the clamp first and then rivet the two um, out, outer plates. I don't know if that made sense, but maybe if I do it again, I'll do, I'll do a recap. I probably wouldn't do a full video because we're covering it all right now. All right, so I'm about to solder. I haven't soldered much in this project, so this was the day of the soldering. So I just have some hard solder there, just cut a bunch of pallions. Oh, actually it's the green plate, it might be medium. I think that the pink plate is hard, but it's like at this point, it doesn't matter the hardness of the solder because this isn't gonna be visible anyways, and I just kind of want it to flow Reconstituting the flocks, you know. I have, or at that point I had like my whole stash of kind of filming accoutrement right outside the door so I could grab a little tripod for my, um, you know, iPod, iPhone if I needed it. Yeah. So I'm just coating everything with flocks. There's my little... I don't know what to call it. Holder in place thing. And I'm putting on solder pallions in there. See that? Those little, little tiny chips. <laughs> or my former students would call them crumbs. It's like you're cutting crumbs. <laughs> Sometimes you just need little, 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 little solder pallions. Anyways, soldering. Am I gonna melt the whole thing? Well, I melted the clip, but it's all, you know, it's soldered, it's soldered in there. 
Put it in the quench water, and then guess what? We gotta do the other one. So I flipped the bench up. Did you see how I flipped my solder block over? Because that one side is really hot, and so if I start to use that same side to set up this new solder job, the heat from the, the block, the fire brick, will evaporate all of the moisture out of my flux before I have a chance to set my solder pal ends. So you just flip it over. I mean, you knew that already, probably, but. Sometimes when I'm watching back this footage, it's a little crazy to me how close I get my phone to the open flame. <laughs> but, you know, the video must be recorded. The footage must be made. That's a pretty good shot. I was determined, I was a little embarrassed that I accidentally melted the pin on the last one. So I was determined to not melt the pin on this one. I mean, it just is 100% getting cut off. So the fact that it melted, nothing, like no negative repercussions at all. But I was like, Laura, you're better than that. Oh, okay, so this is nickel. So I'm pulling out my, well, this is like not nickel pickle. It's um, like I'm trying to decide, do I want to make nickel pickle and put it in this? Or do I want to just, and then I just decided, no. I just want to make a simple um, pickle of hydrogen peroxide and vinegar, which is different than the Sparex that I usually use. Because the Sparex would coat the nickel with like kind of copper. <laughs> We can get into it later, I'm sure. But anyway, so then I remembered, oh, I actually already have one of these pickles mixed up in that. You know, you saw me pull out the hydrogen peroxide and vinegar and then bring over a yellow looking container of liquid. That was some older pickle that well, it's like steel pickle, but it, it basically will take oxide off of a lot of different metals. And it consistently will take the oxidation off of nickel without copper coating it so that's why I used it that's also why I would solder this first before riveting it because once it's soldered I'd be able to clean it up but now that it's all riveted together I can't clean up in there as well oh look at I'm soldering these little pads to their circles and this angle it looks like it's crooked it's not I'm I swear I would never solder it if it was crooked but from this angle it's almost like too far away. All right. And the next one, hopefully I'll get a little bit closer so you can actually see what's going on. <laughs> I've got a file in my lap. That's, anytime you see somebody filing in their lap, it's not usually not very good. So something must be, maybe I'm trying to clean up the inside internal burr from drilling the hole. Okay, here you go. See, there you go. And then I just have a little, um, third hand with the cross locking tweezers just holding it in place so it doesn't move just the weight of it got my pop solder pellions on there there we go easy peasy did you see i flipped the bit the block i flipped the bench mm-hmm It's kind of amazing to me how little soldering this project took. All right, so I got the flux on there. Ooh. This is number four, so this is the last one. And I got my pallions. Line it up. Here we go. Done and done with those. I mean, so then those are also, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to film myself taking them out of the quench water. I don't know. Maybe in the final video, it'll look at how that old steel pickle is just, it just wasn't working as well. I mean, it stays good until it's no longer good. It's just vinegar and uh, hydrogen peroxide though. So it's, you know, something that's really... Um, 
available, widely available, I guess I should say. Oh, these are all of the jump rings that I have to solder together for the handmade nuts and bolts. I can't believe I haven't done that yet. Jeez. Okay, so I got the pink plate. That means it's hard silver solder. I liked this song. It reminded me of Dick Dale. So I saw him in concert in Memphis when I was like, oh my gosh, I was probably like 24, 23 or 24. It was fantastic. It was, he was a very good concert. It was in a small venue. Fantastic. Anyway, so yeah, you saw me put all of these. <laughs> now we're getting sidetracked because I feel like you know this. Like I put, I had already closed them. And so then I just put flux all over all of them, the seam part, and then a little tiny pallion of solder. You can see the fire brick was starting to um, like dry out the flux, but at this point it didn't matter. And I'm using like this really tiny, tiny, get, get your stuff together, lady. Always messing with the cameras. I'm trying to explain what's happening. Um, this really, really tiny. Uh, see, I have to switch it. That torch tip was just like not. I was like, that's a, no, too small. We got to more fire, more fire better. So as I solder it, I kind of move it out of the way. But the ones next to it get preheated and then they solder more readily. And But you got to move it out of the way. Once the solders have made that mistake before, you don't just leave it. You move it to the other side of the fire brick. And there was a couple that didn't go completely, and so I'm taking solder pallions, sticking them in the flux, and then putting them on the hot ring, which isn't best practices. But after a while, and you, you know the techniques, and you know what you're doing, you can kind of bully them a little bit. And if it doesn't work, you're not good enough. <laughs> All right, so these are sterling silver, so they are going in the Sparex pickle. Wipe out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna check this pickle. Let's see what happened. Oh, I'm making a new one. It mustn't have been working as well, which I mean, pickle gets old. It gets, um, you know, I can't say it goes bad, but it, you know, it gets full, you know, it, it absorbs the oxidations. So, I mean, I'm also like not a chemist, so I don't know exactly if that exactly is what happened, but as I understand it, it can get um, worn out. All right, so I'm talking about now, I gotta drill through these, these ones at the end because that's what the, you know, pads are gonna go on. All right, so these weren't completely pickled, but I just decided I'm gonna, while I'm, while I have the right size drill bit in the drill press, I'm just gonna drill through them all and then I'll put this back in the pickle. Sometimes you gotta do stuff like that. I feel like I didn't do a whole lot of talking during this day, but I still, you know, am making the final video you know this is just a studio session with narration it's you know i feel like i'm not showing exactly how the piece was well i guess i am i don't know but i'm just making what i make <laughs> Because I do feel like you, a person, a viewer could get something different. As a maker, I get something different from making a polished make video versus, you know, these you're just kind of getting to see, you know, the, 
commentary, the maker commentary, I guess. All right, so I got my, I center punched them, you saw. Oh dear. Okay, so you see how I have a little piece of nickel that's the same thickness as the outer plates so that it's kind of holding it level so that the holes will be um, straight. I don't need it for these little pieces because they're perfectly flat. No protruding plates. Um, but yeah, I just did little pilot holes. And then this is the big boy. This is the two and a half millimeter um, or maybe even slightly bigger uh, drill bit. So, so serious. She looks so serious. I wonder if I was hungry or something. I mean, I'm probably just tired. You can't see my eyes. <laughs> My eyes, I look so tired. There they are. I'm putting those things back in the pickle, the like longer sides of the handles. I think that that might be the last thing that I actually drill in this project. Isn't that wild? I'm talking about something. Oh. So the one thing about that pickle that's bad is it does smell like rotting. Well, it's not like rotting eggs. It just, it doesn't smell like rotting eggs. It smells like Easter eggs because it's vinegar. Anyways, so I had to put it in the uh, back sink because my studio was starting to smell like uh, Easter egg dyeing factory. What am I doing now? Oh, okay, so these are the end little end nubs. Remember I said I was gonna, I'm sure you remember because I've brought it up multiple times, but I was gonna make a wing nut. Well, I ended up just picking, I think I ended up using six millimeter CZ. And it looks nice, you know, it was really, the choice was what was gonna look consistent, so like design wise, what was gonna be aesthetically pleasing according to my design sense. So the six millimeter stone, so the six and a half millimeter tubing and I just cut off a little section of that tube and now I'm flattening out. You've seen me do this before. Then that end of the, the stock is not flat. So you gotta, it's like in machining when you have to face your stock before you make your cut. That's what you're doing. Just, I'm facing it by hand. I don't know. This is all stuff I've never had to explain before. I just like, you know, do it and uh, I don't know. Nobody ever sees it. So I feel like, okay, for the record, that's what I was doing. I was facing it. And then you got to get like all the burr off because of ca uh, the sawing and filing creates burrs what is this this is smaller tube oh this must be what i'm i must be like gonna try and make some of the nuts and bolts oh so for the handmade nuts and bolts the size tubing that i had was too small of an inner diameter. So I had to drill it out to the right inner diameter for the tap hole, if that means anything to you. I hope it does. If you're watching this, it probably does actually. Okay, so now I have my tap and my little hand piece and I'm trying to tap this friggin' tube. And guess what? It's rotating in my miter jig, which is chucked in my vise. So in the end, this is what caused me to quit for the day. But we'll get to that part. You'll see. You'll see how that, <laughs> how it all progressed. But it just, all right. So I had tapped that one side and I cut it off. Have it in a pin vise, taking the burr off and recutting, like opening up the threads. Cause sometimes when you cut 
a threaded thing. The, the cutting and filing will mess up the threads. So you got to get back in there with the tap and just reopen the threads. Oh my gosh, my fingers. I'm just cringing now, remembering. Okay. I have no idea. I think that this is where everything started to go south because I realized what I wanted to do, like pre-tap the tube and then cut it and then solder on the jump ring. That's gonna be the like on <laughs> onboard washer. No, I don't know what to call it. Like, I mean, this will make sense more when we get to this part of the project, but and then set the stone, I realized like I wasn't gonna be able to do that. Um, just physically, it wasn't gonna, the tube was just gonna keep spinning and just, I think, yeah, see right at that point, I like finally got, had the end, that was the end and I, I that was it, drove me crazy and I just hammered the, I hammered the end of the tube with my big hammer because I was like, this is not holding and it's not working and I'm getting very frustrated. Like, it's funny, as I'm watching this, I can see I'm really frustrated by my body language. I'm I'm mad. I don't know if mad's the right word. I think I'm just frustrated. And I was like, I'm supposed to be mailing this tomorrow. This was the day before I was supposed to mail it. Anyway, so I just decided to switch what I was doing and work on these little end nubs. So I have a back plate of nickel and I have my little tube that the stone is gonna be set into. And I soldered it from the inside because I had, for some reason, entertained the idea of leaving the nickel sheet, like a little halo, a little bit of a, like an overhang and so I was like I wanted the solder to be on the inside see how nice that soldered quench it but that didn't end up happening spoiler alert I mean you'll see that in the okay so this is the rod that I'm gonna be you know threading and that's gonna be what comes out of the little end nub that you just saw me solder so while that's pickling I just you know Decided to thread it. Oh, threading sterling silver. I'm glad I can speed this up because if you had had to watch that, <laughs> here it is. Okay. So yeah, I cut off. That's the piece that just came out of the pickle. Cut off the little melted nubs you can see how it set the tubes perfectly in the center where it belongs and just flushed out that whole area because now I'm gonna tap that tube but remember the tube is too uh, the inner diameter of the tube was too small so I had to drill it out and now you know it's the perfect size it looks like I'm tapping it crooked, but I think it might just be... Oh, all of a sudden there's two of them. I must have, I don't know, soldered one in secrecy. I am I apologize about that. At this point though, you can tell like, this is all footage from my iPhone because all of my other cameras died or all of the memory cards were full. And so that's why you're getting all of these like delightful little close-up shots because I have no other cameras. Yeah, so then that's when I, I cut out the circumference of the tube around and then filed the edges and now I'm gonna mark the center of the back plate. And then mark the center of the other one. <laughs> and then I put it on a little, the back of a little punch and then I center punch the circ, the, I center punch the center um, center punch and then I drilled through because then 
I'm going to, I think, okay, that, that was a pilot hole. I'm trying to be accurate, and now I'm center punching it, uh, drilling it, sorry. Drilling it with the right size drill bit to then tap this hole. And now it's ready to accept that threaded rod. Remember we just threaded there it is. Remember that? Well, remember when we <laughs> remember when we threaded that? Anyway, so then I put all my flux on there and I thread it thread it together and then stick a little solder pallion in there, heat it up. And then that solder pallion will flow into the threads and connect both of those pieces. Hopefully without th without um, without running all the way down the rest of the threads in the threaded rod. I mean, I can always re rethread the rod or open up the, the threads. Okay, I'm gonna do the second one. It's at this point I'm wondering, I hope as I'm doing this voiceover, I hope I remembered to press record. Oh, what am I about to do? Oh, this footage is, oh, this is the second. <laughs> Whoopsies, this is out of order. This is, remember when I was like, oh, I must have started the second one together. <laughs> well, you get to, that's the, that's a mistake that I made. <laughs> oh, this is so out of order. Am I going to go back and fix it? I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if I'm gonna fix I think I'm gonna leave it, guys. Those clips were out of order. Can you ever forgive me? Anyway, so you haven't seen this part yet. This is the second clamp where I am gonna tap the tube that's inside the end there. So I'm just filing it so it's nice and flush. This music. Oh, I must have like all of my cameras that I must have had. I may have gone out and bought more memory cards, to be completely honest. But oh, the um, everything, you know, is turned back on, which is fantastic. Oh, OK. So these are back working on those pads and I'm cutting the excess off that like scored and bent part. That was really just the ends, the means to the end of having those two pieces be parallel. So now I'm cutting them off. And I gotta round out those edges. Oh, I also like have to let my husband borrow a drill bit because his drill bit was dull that he was using. Um, yep, yeah, rounding out the circle. I would say that that clamp, that hand clamp you see me use a lot, is one of like my most used. Oh yeah, so this, I, you know, I was starting to get really frantic. So the framing of this shot, I just wanted to have it be in the center because it was the original footage that was like way up in the upper left corner and it's a bad shot, so. So now I'm working probably on the second or third one. I have it in my parallel pliers and I'm just cutting along the edge of the parallel plier jaws and using that as my guide. Okay, and now I have it in different. Oh, the jaw, I, maybe my hands weren't, were too tired and so I was having trouble holding the parallel pliers for that long. And so then I used that other nifty hand vise. That's like one of the best things my dad ever gave me. I've had it for years. I can't remember exactly. He gave it to me when I was like maybe in 
like grad school or something. Look at how beautiful that is. My goodness. I don't know what time it is. This could be like 8.30 p.m. It could be 1 a.m. I have no idea. Oh, but look, I'm wearing my RZ mask. I'm just using that heatless Mizzy wheel to get the, like I think usually I would do that with a hand file or like on a belt sander or something, but just this is, we're getting to that point where you're like quick and dirty, gets the job done. That's because it just not ideal, might not be ideal, but it it's like what I need. Look at those leg warmers. Definitely strutting the fashion this day. Okay, miter jig in the vise. Second miter jig. I have two miter jigs for this exact reason. Because sometimes you need one <laughs> in your vise and you need to be using the other one on your bench. Oh, so I'm. this is me again trying to tap this tube. And it just broke me at the end. Oh, I think actually these are the end caps that I made that I didn't, I didn't actually end up using them, but they were, oh, I dropped it on the floor. Did you see that? I just cut another one. At a certain point, you're like, okay, I could spend so much time looking for what I just dropped. Just make another one. This will be faster if I just make another one. But yeah, this was supposed to be on the end of the main screw that um, adjusts how wide the jaws of the clamps are open. I ended up just not even using them because first of all, I couldn't figure out how to thread them on to the threaded rod. I couldn't figure out how to get them in there, but then it was like not necessary. And you'll see that at the end. But yeah, this is, um, soldering the end cap the, like it's just like not important and I ended up not using them anyway so but that's why I'm over there all right it's coming together all right so I still am like I'm gonna try and make these handmade nuts and everything else was pretty much wrapped up besides the you know handmade nuts and bolts ah. and so I was like all right we're in the home stretch but we really weren't we really weren't like let's be completely honest now after the fact cutting it to size filing it flush putting it in the pin vise taking the burr off setting the stone because you can set certain stones and then solder and you just got to let it air cool um because like the stone will shatter if you quench it <laughs> but you can um it, with czs you can solder with them in place but you just have to make sure you don't really overheat it or like let flux touch the stone or anything you have to be a little bit more careful. I prefer like sapphires and rubies, but sometimes you don't feel like using 24 of those. Uh. Okay, it's quitting time. I'm not done yet, but I'm gonna get a good night's sleep and I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning and I'm gonna hit it hard and I'm gonna finish this thing and it's gonna be fantastic. Thanks for sticking with me this whole studio session and I guess I'll show you where I'm at really quickly. I gotta get something out of the pickle, hold on. <laughs> All right, what do you think? It's like, sort of together. I'm not gonna force it because I've invested too much in this to just spotted a potential problem, but I'm gonna make it work. It's gonna be fine. Okay. 
I guess it's just be like that. So this is the um, back end little knob that's going to get threaded in here. It's like way longer than I needed. Well, you know, what if you want it to be whatever. So that's the threaded knob. And then these are the little pieces that are going to be on the, ta-da. Looks like it's coming together. Yay. Anyway, so the last thing besides the like final finish work that I have to do is um, I have to make all of these little CZ capped nuts and bolts. And that's all I have for explanation besides like it's, look at it's, it looks fantastic. It's coming together. Oh, and the last, I also have to set this stone in there, which is like no big deal. So that's where we're at. And um, I love you. And um, I'm completely depleted, but I am happy that it's coming together. So <sighs> I love you. And um, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay. Have a good night rest. I will too. Okay. Mwah. Liar. You said you were going to bed. What time is it right now? I, I said goodbye and then I basically just kept the cameras rolling and set these stones. I think I just was out of my mind. And I'm having trouble. Um, I actually had to get in there with a ball burr and grind that threaded post because it was sticking up into the tube and the culet or the pointy part of the stone. See, I'm grinding it away in the middle there. The culet of the stone was hitting that <laughs> and wasn't sitting deep enough down into the little cavity. Okay, so we fixed it and I got my burnisher and I'm, you know, setting the stone by just pushing over the edge here it is look at that so i do both of them i think it was just like you know i had just finished some things you can see on my bench i've got all of the jump rings ready to go Really, I mean, I'm very happy with the way that this project did end up coming out with all of the constraints and kind of backtracking and different unexpected uh, series of events. Um, you know, I, I feel very proud of how I was able to kind of pivot and make things work. And, and that's it. Just looking at it one last time before I go lay my head down on the bed. Oh, I'm figuring out. No, I'm not. I, I'm like waiting for this to end. Uh, I guess I was figuring out how long I needed to cut that um, post or I don't know what to call it. But, you know, this part that adjusts the jaws Figuring out what's the longest it needs to be. Yeah, I don't want to accidentally cut it too short, but. Oh. And then recutting that little end there, because sometimes cutting, I already said before, it'll mess up the threads. Look it. It's in there. Oh my goodness. Mm. And that was definitely a day. Okay, we only have to record this two more times. <laughs> How's that look? Yeah? Oh, I think I just gotta like swipe it and then see. This performance is dedicated to my Patreon members of the Ironclad crew. Thank you for sponsoring these videos. And thank you for giving me the confidence to let my freak flag fly. fly. <laughs>